So, last week we had a seven what's in the box moment. What's in the f box? And today we're having another one. I received both of the boxes in question on the same day. The last video box came in the mail from All Game Terrain. And this video's box was handed to me by my buddy Hoffman when we met up at the kit show we took a field trip to in this video. Now, he didn't tell me what was in the box, he just said I should not shake it or drop it. And when I opened it, I was very pleasantly surprised. Greetings, good humans, and welcome to Tabletop Alchemy, where sometimes it's terrain month, and we open surprise loot boxes. And we thank our patrons for keeping us in beer and hobby supplies. It always means a lot and is much appreciated. Okay, so this here is quite indicative of a Hoffman box. He goes to extraordinary lengths to make sure his stuff doesn't break. And yes, I did briefly consider tipping this box over to both display my disdain for authority and to antagonize him on the internet, but I didn't. So, Tabletop Alchemy, home of the anticlimax. All right, let's open this thing up and see what's inside. Oh, dude, dude, I forgot all about this. This is so cool. Oh, and it smells like primer too. Okay, quick backstory. I completely forgot about this. So when Hoffman came up to visit and play Kill Team for the first time, he brought some scatter terrain, and I pulled out a couple of the TT Combat MDF buildings I have. Now, none of my buildings are painted yet. They're all just assembled. But at the end of our session, he said he'd like to paint up one of the pieces. So I sent him home with this one. I was like, have at it, dude. Have fun. And apparently he did. Okay, hang on. Rowan Witchbane's got to run her inspection. She's got to make sure there's no enemy busters somehow stowing away in there. Okay, give me it back. This is mine. It ain't yours. Just let me have my delusions, dang it. Look at this thing. This is so rad. Great color scheme. I always like orange stripes. I mean, look, I'm in orange and green today. Who would dare wear such a thing? But yeah, I really like orange stripes or just, you know, all, any kind of striping is very sci-fi feeling, right? The hard-edged paint line always feels sort of cyberpunky or futuristic. I dig the two-tone grays and the orange. All the details are picked out. The blast door looks great. And this thing here on the roof, this is definitely scratch-built, for sure. And I suspect works like a handle because the roof is removable. Yep. Dude! Dude, look at the... He put a full interior in here. This kit doesn't come with any of this stuff. This is killer, man. This is really cool. Ho hold up, hold up. I thought it might be cool to chat with Hoffman directly about what he did on this MDF kit. Dear viewers, Hoffman. Hoffman, dear viewers. Hello, dear viewers. <laughs> That's as thrilled as Hoffman ever sounds. That's his normal intonation. <laughs> also, I can't guarantee that Buster is going to make an appearance because he's going to have to wander in here on his own and he doesn't like to be picked up. He so. weighs like 17 ounces. You could go pick him up. You could make him do your bidding. I picked him up last night to put him in bed and he was terrified. <laughs> Which meant, and I had to sleep on like 14 inches of the edge of the bed because he parked himself in the middle because he was all like, no, don't be mean to me. Buster rules the house, man. You he is the most manipulative crowd. animal I've ever seen. I don't really believe he's terrified, but he's certainly good at making me think he's terrified. <laughs> yeah, my fancy Edward beer glass. Wait, that's from Edward the company? Yes. So I bought a royal boxing of the BF109F, and it came with these crystal beer glasses. And uh, I just found out that when I washed it, though, the lettering's starting to come off, so I'm very upset about that. And what are we drinking today? It's uh, Makers and Coke. Very nice. Hoffman's into day drinking, just for those of you that would like to know. Not normally, it's just today. He alcohol. says that all the time. I'm not opposed to day drinking, I just have to do extra work after this session. Alright, so let's talk a little bit about this uh, this crazy cool uh, MDF kit that uh, you painted up for me. Which, again, thank you very much, super cool. But You're welcome. One thing I want to point out is that when I handed it to you, it was all glued together, right? It's just one piece, it's not like yeah. you had any parts except for that removable roof part. Other well, than that, right, it's all one no, piece that you no had to parts. work with. And I was going to repair your uh, shoddy assembly work, but then when I actually got around <laughs> to painting it, I realized I didn't have that kind of time. Yeah. So I there's a couple of glue blobs here and there that bothered me, but I didn't fix them. 
Yes, I was not. I I didn't meticulously put together any of those MDF kits. I just didn't think they were necessarily worth the time and effort because I had so many of them. But yeah, they're not really. But how much of a pain in the ass was it to? Because so one thing, just when you look at the main product, just sitting by itself, right? It's clearly got very sort of hard edges on all the paint lines because it's, it's got the sci-fi look and everything, right? So how difficult was that to do? with it being one piece like did you mask you must have masked off for some of those colors right i masked off the little black stripe that's kind of like the belt line yeah right underneath the orange yeah that's i I masked that off and i think i masked off that black skirt that's below that and i did put a little bit of tape along the gray so when the orange went down just keep the orange from blowing over onto the gray too much I didn't yeah. spend a lot of time. It was for for me, the the masking on that was very quick and not a lot. It was kind of quick and dirty because I knew I was going to weather it. And did you base it all in the light gray and then do the colors over the top of that, or did or did you paint the orange first? Or everything that I called black is actually dark German gray. So I used that for the the skirt and the belt line. And I did all the panel line shading with that. So I sprayed that black over all the panel lines. So what I ended up with was a white shape now with a bunch of black lines. And then I did a few sort of random patterns with the black in the areas where the orange was going to go primarily, but I think a little bit in the gray areas, but mostly because I knew it would show through the orange. So you you just spray it, like, because those lines, I know those lines on the MDF kits are, they're super fine, right? The actual, like, grooves, but, so you just just airbrush those in you didn't like put in any sort of uh wash or something or some of the weathering colors washed down into them later but no i didn't specifically add anything every bit of the weathering is pencils with the exception of the steps i did those with tamiya hull red for the base just because it was too hard to there's too much area to cover with a pencil but then i added the other colors in on top of that with the pencil all the streaking and everything like across all the walls and everything it's all yeah all of that Other than a little bit of like a meander pattern with the airbrushing, just so it has those light and dark spots to sort of give it some, you know, makes it look more dimensional. And some of the orange panels, there are inset circles, right? That are like gratings, but they're like inset in there and they're like in black or whatever. You just hand paint those after the orange? Yes. And then there's the little raised round things, but you actually put something in those, right? Like there's some kind of texture. Yeah, it's a... It's the suspension spring part from a Panzer IV. The Dragon Panzer IVs, the suspension pieces, are made up out of five or six pieces. And one of them is that cap with, like, those spring detail on the outside. Which is why the Dragon kits are good for nernies, because they have lots of separate pieces for all that stuff. So, basically, those were just on a sprue. I just cut them off and pushed them in there, and they worked just fine. So, the roof is removable as for a piece of terrain, right? It, it's it's just a piece of MDF flat. But you added that. You scratch-built the, the radar, gun, whatever thing, right, that's up there that kind of serves as a handle, but also just as a detail piece, which... I thought it was super cool when I saw it because I know that's, you know, I knew that wasn't part of the kit. Tell us a little bit about how you made that piece or what inspired you to put it on there. It even has the cool, like, like it's sitting on a, on a frame. Like there's, there's like, like a, a cross of like what would be like iron, I don't know, like steel rails that are like clamped down onto the, onto the roof. So you mentioned the other day that I had a spares box. So my spares box I've had probably for 30 years and it's, I've taken it to work, which probably was a stupid thing to do because I gave parts away basically. That's the kind of dedication you bring to your clients, man. Just put it that way. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. (laughs) So I've got parts in there from just forever basically and the that cross piece you're talking about is the it's the base frame for a flak 88 oh yeah okay that would be 70 second scale oh it's yeah tiny. okay so yeah but what i remembered in that first the kill team game was we had miniatures up there fighting and i didn't like it because it was too open so i wanted something to mess with the openness <laughs> just of so it. everyone knows he's talking about when my orcs kicked his uh Milit- Astra Militarum gray coat asses. <laughs> yes. Thank you for clarifying that. Yes. I have to point out so, my wins when I can. 
I didn't like the, I mean, the, the idea of using it as a handle was kind of secondary. That came to me after the fact, but the main idea was I didn't like the big open area. And it works great because, I mean, there's still an area to put miniatures up in the corners, so it still fits the miniatures on the roof. Oh, yeah, no, I, I tested it with a miniature. I put miniatures up there and moved them around to make sure it wasn't too big and, like, okay, this this works. That's one thing you are very good about that I am the opposite of. <laughs> which I guess translates to terrible ad. You do a lot of testing. Uh, you will you will test not on your actual pieces as opposed to the way that I do things. Hey, I'm going to test this on the piece I'm doing it on. Yeah, because if it works, yes, well. it'll be a shortcut. If it doesn't work, I don't know what I'll do. But yes, you're always, you know, uh, you're always telling me to test on different things and you're very uh, good at that. <laughs> sort of thing well i did I, I didn't do tests on the weathering for the building because i kind of already knew that what i was doing was going to work so next piece up is a panzer four sprocket or idler so it's all sitting on an idler and then i put something in there as an upright which i don't remember what it was and then the next piece is a resin casting from my scratch belt wave serpents oh right the the, the, the rounded back conical yeah. sort of thing right yeah, yeah yeah so that was something i scratch built and had resin castings of so i have a bunch of those kicking around here still so i use that and there's like a what looks like a pneumatic arm it's like a larger yeah, piece with a thinner tube it's a secondary strut from a landing gear so not like the main oleo but the the strut that would kick it out make sure it stays so i have things like that laying around just something to make it look like it would actually move sure. you know, give it, sell it a little bit and the the cable behind it is just a piece of scrap and then the the thing holding the dish is a seat from some kind of 70s spacecraft kit and there's a rod coming through that that goes into the dish which is a panther wheel and the thing out in front of it i'm not sure what that is from the little weird star thingy star yeah spindly it's, star it's thing. maybe from a to me a vosper patrol boat kit How's the whole construction glued to the actual roof piece? Did you use super glue? Yeah, but I also pinned it because I knew we were going to be using it as a handle. So I wanted to make sure it wasn't going to. So it has pins running down through. If you look at the very ends, there's a little circular cap on the very. That's covering up where I drilled it for the pin. Nice. That's what I kind of figured. Probably would have would have not trusted just super glue because now we're going to start. We're going to start an internet civil war right now, and I'm going to ask you. Do you use super glue on your plastic kits? No, super glue is shit for plastic kits. <laughs> and you're all doing it wrong if you're using it. Welcome it, to Lord uh, Hubbard's Manor. <laughs> you have to, like, if you obviously, if you're attaching dissimilar materials, you have to use it. But if it's styrene to styrene, you should be using liquid cement. Super glue fails over time, it dries out and just dies. And it also makes plastic brittle. And it yeah. does a bunch of other things that are not very useful. Because I was gluing brass pins to MDF, super glue is the only thing you can use. Sure. Yeah, yeah. And in that case, it's such a tiny amount of super glue on the styrene that it's not going to create a load problem. I will say that one of the biggest surprises I, I got was when I lifted that lid off. And the kit I gave you was empty on the inside. It was just four right. walls right and i was like dude like look at all this crazy stuff so i want to go around the little interior room and ask you about the pieces so of course we'll start with oh. the the main one which is the the large sort of in, instrument panel that spans into the corner and there's like a round i just noticed this there's like a the base of it's like a like a turned over pipe plate thing but it has like a texture in it like it literally i don't know what it is and then you added like all these nerdy bits to it. The console is from an Aurora. It's either a flying sub or the UFO. Pretty sure it's Invader's UFO, but the interior was octagonal like that. And it had consoles all around the inside and it had a lid you could lift off to see all that stuff. So I immediately saw that when I got it home, I opened it up and was like, okay, because I already knew there was nothing in there. Right, when I looked right. at it. The part underneath it, holding it up is the interior of a, Apollo uh, command service module. Oh, so I built one of those for a client years ago, but it has no interior, so I just kept all the interior parts for Nernies. So that's sitting on top of there. The piece on the very top 
covering it all up is just a scratch built, like a cut piece of styrene, and I glued a hatch to the top and a couple of things to just make it look like something was there. And the little detail colors, did you paint those? Did you paint that assembly and then stick it in there? Or did you paint those after you stuck the, glued the whole thing it's in? It's all painted after it was, yeah, oh, after it, it was, was glued in. Oh, that's yeah. a pain in the ass. So it was not a lot of paint detail there. Yeah, I mean, to get to like just working with a, a five inch square to, to get through with a, paintbrush and try to see what you're doing at the same time that must have been a pain in the ass yeah it was which is why i didn't go crazier with the paint job because it was not fun so i was like all right that's enough you get the idea it's something happening there one of my favorite things is just all the little just little nerdies and details you just kind of add it to the walls like kind of going around like there's just little things right like one of my favorite things well there's this one piece so if you're looking if you're looking down at the at the cockpit or the the instrument panel and above the door yes. there's like a round thing but to the left of the door there's kind of like a pretty neat looking detail piece which I, I I'm imagining is one like piece from a tank kit or something. So it's actually three pieces. Oh, okay. There's the piece that's up against the wall, which I don't remember what that is. There's the fan, which is like a it's an impeller motor, like a submarine would have a propeller that's inside a cage, like a little right. housing. Right. I don't know what that came from. It might be that Vosper patrol boat again. It might be a torpedo. But I had two of them, so I stuck them on there to look like ventilation fans. And then the part underneath it is different on both of them, but they're like landing gear pieces. Yeah. I mean, it just looks like it has a purpose. It looks like it's, you know, made to do something. But Well, that's what I always tried to do. With, to me, that's how you sell Nerny is you have to think it through and make it look like it's... You have to have mechanical knowledge helps, like knowing what real things look like. Yeah. All right. So going around, then we have the TV screen, which you threw in there on a yes. wall mount. <laughs> the, the TV screen is the, the plaque from a Fine Molds X-Wing. So some of the parts you were asking about, hold on there. So I have them broken into, so this is drop tanks. Oh. This is a sandwich yeah. tin full of drop tanks so you organize your bits box <laughs> a little bit yeah so i have a box that's rectangular parts and i have a box that's round parts and i have a box that's drop tanks and weird shapes and different so i can kind of go to a thing and go, all right this is the thing i'm looking for i thought this detail is cool so you have the screen the lcd screen is up there right and then i i'm right. pretty confident that you're you just tell me if I'm wrong, but I, I bet you put that screen in there. Maybe you put that screen in second, but my assumption is you put the screen in there and you're like, well, the bottom of the wall is still empty. So we're going to add a little something in there. So you put in that cool little like conduit thing that goes up. It's just such a small part, but it adds so much realism to the piece. Yeah, I felt like it needed something there, yeah. so I threw that in. And it just works good. That's another tank part. It's cool because it's like, you didn't bother, like the wall didn't need to have a bunch of extra detail. Again, this is like going into like the realism of it sort of where you're like, yeah, this, this wall has a, a screen on it. That's what you'd be looking at if you were in this room and you wouldn't necessarily put a bunch of other crap against that wall. But there's just a little, little hardwired piece of electronics that's in there. And another detail that I want to point out that I think is very cool is the scuff marks on the floor by the door. Yeah, so that. I knew I wanted that right away when I started painting it. That reminded me of a, a place that I was at that so many people moved into this elevator that the elevator floor was diamond tread aluminum. But so many people had walked over it that the entrance and right up to the button panel that diamond tread had all been worn off. So it was basically just smooth aluminum. And I was like, ah, it's cool. So yeah, I painted the floor with the Vallejo, that Vallejo metallic that we like. Oh yeah, the shiny stuff, metal color. Right. I don't have a lot of luck with chipping fluid, so I decided to just, when I painted the floor, I just sort of painted around the area that I wanted rough, and then I went in and just stippled it with a brush to make it more random. And to be clear, just so everyone knows, like, this paint job or the, the, the work that, that Hoffman's done on this, this is not like something where he sat down for two weeks and was like, you know, I'm going to make a studio grade model or anything. I mean, you put a lot of work into it, but I, I just want to point out that it's 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 not like like your high-end perfection stuff 
and it's still so cool because this is like the the low grade level of your of your talents are at work and this is just for a gaming piece that you have fun with but like there's so the steps are worn which is is makes sense but also the handrail is worn i didn't know what to do with like the handrail color was like all right i don't know what to do so i painted it that same gray and i was looking at it going yeah i don't really like that but i don't have a better idea because i would say that's one of the details or the things about the mdf kits that kind of i mean it kind of bothers me a little bit there's not really any way around it and it, it doesn't matter but it's just like yeah, because it's an MDF kit. Everything is made out of MDF. It's like that railing. If you really wanted to make it look real, it would be done out of brass, rod, or tube, or plastic. But it'd be tubular or something smaller, not the same width as everything else. But you know, that's just part of MDF kits. Whatever. Because I tried, was trying to get this, so we should back up. I've had this kit for eight months when I got it from you with the idea that I'm going to paint this, and then it sat here for eight months, and then I realized that because of other projects I've got going. It's going to sit here another eight months if I don't get it done in this week before we went to meet you for the yeah. kit show. Had I have thought it through and had more time, I might have replaced those railings because I don't like them that they're square right. and chunky like that. So tell me a little bit about 7Z. I was looking at it and it felt like it needed something, something to give it scale or something to give it... Um, what the term I want here is, but like a human presence sort of thing or a, an intelligent presence sort of thing all the way back in school when I was doing drafting and like the, I would put stuff like that on my drafting, like anything that was artistic, that wasn't just a straight up blueprint. Anytime we did any kind of renderings or anything, I would add little things like that and drive my teacher nuts. Cause it was all sci-fi weirdness. And he was just like, that's not what we do here. <laughs> <laughs> This is architecture, not sci-fi art class. And you were like, I beg to so, differ. Exactly. Uh, seven and Z are very easy to cut out. Shapes are quick. and just make my own little stencil. I don't have to do anything complicated. It gets the point across. It doesn't have to. Yeah, no compound curves. <laughs> right, exactly. No compound curves. Like years ago when I worked on um, Chronicles of Riddick, the my boss wanted the director's sort of initials in one of the buildings, and his name was... 2e so i cut a stencil for a two and sort of a stylized e and then we sandblasted ah, that into yeah. plaster and only like you'd really have to sure. look at it to yeah. figure it out it's so you cut there. 7z literally just out of a piece of plastic and card no it's a piece of masking tape drew it on there real quick and cut it and then looked at it and like looked close enough to what i wanted so i airbrushed it on kind of light and then went back and scrubbed it with before I took the mask off with some water to kind of break the color up a little bit. Yeah, because so you can kind aged. of see the orange coming like through the rest it, of it. Like it's, it's wearing off or whatever, yeah. Yeah, and there's a little bit of graffiti on there, too. Yeah, that maybe I'm, you still I'm have looking through, but I might have to... I do see it right now. I have one photo that shows it. It's like uh, it's like an exclamation point with the skull. <laughs> yes, it's yeah. my little skull exclamation point. Yeah, perfect. Well, yeah, man, it's a super cool piece. Well, I'm glad you're happy with it. I had fun doing it. It uh, It's a pain in the behind. It's fun figuring the weathering out on one panel, and then it's a pain in the behind having to replicate it three more times. But that's kind of the way that always works. The fun is figuring it out, and then after that, it's just like, <laughs> oh, all right, here he is. He's making an appearance. <laughs> Say hi. Buster. Yes. Hey, Buster. That's right. You said hello. You're going to get your treat now because you're awesome. Oh, I saw his ears perk up at that. All right. Many thanks to Hoffman for this crazy cool job on the MDF build and taking some time to hang out and let his face be seen on the internet, which I know makes him infinitely uncomfortable. So go put some details on some scatter terrain. Take things up a notch. It really does make something even cooler in the end. See ya.